applying them across the board that our city government should be a more effective for all of our citizens and be transparent. That's all I need. Thank you. Ms. Briggs. Real quick, my vision for the fourth ward, first of all, um, we need to explore neighborhood house. The neighborhood house is right directly, not even 100 feet from my house. Why can't we utilize the neighborhood house and make it a full running recreation center? It's already there. Partnership with them. Let's do something, with, especially with these younger folks that don't have nothing to do after hours. It's right there. We can utilize it. It's not open um, after hours. I can see it. I have an aunt that lives right in front of it. My mother lives right down the street from it. I live Let's do something with that neighborhood house. Also, how about that community policing? I'm gonna still stay on that crime thing because I'm very concerned about that. That 17-year-old gentleman that got shot and killed, it wasn't even 200 feet from my house. So I'm very concerned. Thank you. Next question. How do you plan to work um, in conjunction with community organizations to address gun violence, Mr. Huckabay? Well, first and foremost, uh, my entire liberal career has been those of, of partnership. Uh, I think that's key uh, with the council uh, in order to address gun violence is we're going to have to partner with community organizations who are doing the work, uh, whether it's the uh, anti-violence coalition, which, which I've supported, uh, or any other organization in the city that is conducting that type of work. This is a, is a job that cannot be done alone. It takes the entire community to rally together for an issue as serious as, as gun violence. We know that one loss in, a, in our city, one child is too many. So it's something that we all need to, to be invested in, you know, because these are our children we're talking about. And it's a very serious matter. Thank you. Ms. Mills grandson. Well, I would say that my counterpart, third ward council person, and I have already started meeting with block associations and school officials, and this is one way of beginning to start the dialogue. Also, as a current member of the council, it is my responsibility to work with public safety and to support those needs. And as the mayor had stated earlier, the council has supported the hiring of new uh, recruits. And so it is the dialogue that has to happen, but it happens a lot of times in the smaller circles and then broadens out. So we are continuing to work and promote block associations, continuing to work with the school officials that are around us and supporting the work of our public safety director and the officers who are doing a wonderful job. Thank you, thank you. Mr. Simmons. Can you repeat that question for yes. me, so? How do you plan to work in conjunction with community organizations to address gun violence? I would work, I would work with our uh, police department, our law enforcement. I think that they have, uh, they're very knowledgeable about uh, the gang violence that's going on here in Plainfield. I think they have programs in place. I would think that they would partner with the, uh, our educational based school system in order to like uh, uh, enhance that and to educate our children uh, to about gangs, gang violence, and, 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 and anything of that nature. I also believe that, I mean, it starts uh, at home with teaching your kid uh, respect uh, and to uh, engage them in positive uh, things. Uh, that will sort of deter them. I know that you can't catch every one of them, but I know that if you catch one, it's one less that's on the street involved in gangs. So again, uh, I would uh, promote the, sounds kind of corny going back to the 60s, but promote love and respect for an individual and, and to show that each person's life counts and it matters. Thank you. Ms. Briggs. The gun violence. Um, first of all, I just want to say also that I'm part of Plainfield Anti-Violence Coalition um, as well, and um, what I would do is I would partnership with some outside entities and explore what's going on with other towns and how they got their violence down. What did they do 
to make sure that their violence got, went from a record high to a record low. Also, if we have to, let's repeat that gun, back, that, that gun buyback program. Do that again. Keep doing it until we get some results. I mean, I know you can't get every gun off the street, but at least if we get one gun, that's one less gun that's, off, that's not on the streets anymore. Mr. Cox. <clears throat> the truth takes a village to raise a child. Mm. You have to think about our community of Plainfield, New Jersey as one big child. So what I would do to combat the gun violence would be to cultivate, continue to cultivate relationships that I and we have already cultivated. Uh, when I was the director of membership of the Plainfield Boys and Girls Club, I cultivated a grant program through the State Attorney General's program, which led to $50,000 a year for three years through uh, Attorney General Peter Harvey's uh, Project Vision program. That program was specifically designed to combat the effects of guns, drugs, and gangs on the middle school age youth. So what I would do is to continue to cultivate programs like, as such to help reduce truly reduce the crime numbers here in our city of Plainfield, especially our violent crime numbers. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, question number three. What is your strategy for helping former inmates have a successful path to re-entry? And Ms. Mills Ransom, you answer first. I really can't say that I've developed a strategy, but being a former educator, I know that one of the first things would, to be, would be to deal with educating them while they are incarcerated so that when they come out, they have skills that are marketable or that are some kind of trade. Also working with those individuals that are addressing criminal uh, reform we have a number of agencies that are doing that. So it's a matter of not recreating a wheel, but to align myself, my resources, my educational background, my empathy for those in need with those agencies to help uh, to solve or address this problem. Thank you. Mr. Simmons. Wow, well, <clears throat> that's kind of tough. I don't know if we can actually be totally effective in, in rehabbing every one of the uh, in, uh, inmates that are back on the street, but I think that one of the things they may lack is direction and probably love and understanding. Sounds kind of weird again, but I think that a lot of those uh, individuals that wind up uh, incarcerated uh, may be because of lack of uh, concern from individuals or lack of things that are, that are in place to help keep them straight. Uh, education, uh, maybe a lack of good education or the information that are provided in schools, maybe a concern or non-concern of the individuals that are around them to like uh, push them in other areas. Uh, I myself, like with my kids, kept uh, them engaged, maybe uh, engaging them in more positive like things prior would help prevent you from having to make that decision on what to do with them after they're incarcerated. Uh, maybe proactive instead of reactive uh, might be the best solution. Thank you. Ms. Briggs. What I would do is, um, first of all, also, I would definitely look into the expunge program because if, obviously, if they got locked up, now they have a record. So we need to look into something to expunge their record so that way they can get jobs. A lot of times when people are locked up, they're locked up, they're not locked up because they want to be locked up. Everybody's not a criminal all the time. But however, I would look into that so that way they can get jobs, they can have financial stability because they need stability. And also look into any services that we have that exist already in Plainfield to get them the social, the proper social skills so they know how to function in society. Because they've been locked down and locked up so long and they're behind the wall, they're bound and they feel like they don't have no hope. We need to explore something to give them hope. Thank you. Mr. Cox. It is said that you should never look down upon a man unless you're extending a helping hand. As a public safety practitioner, oftentimes you see that people release from incarceration, their issue is everybody's looking down upon them. 
So one of the things that I would aim to do would be to look at them, to engage with them, and to find out what their true needs are. Some of them may have a substance abuse problem. Some of them may have the lack of a skill or trade. Some of them just may need somebody to give them that extra opportunity to be a productive and positive member of our society. So what I would do is engage these individuals, set up some type of forum, some type of board for the city where when we have newly released uh, ex-cons or ex-convicts that we would engage them and have roundtable discussions, maybe monthly, maybe quarterly, whatever is convenient, so that we can find out what their true needs are as a productive person in our society. Thank you. Mr. Huckaday. I think we need to examine, this, this issue of, is of the utmost importance. First of all, we need to examine the historical implications and the, and, and the past wrongdoings and, and just the fact that most of the people that are incarcerated are black and brown people. Thank you. All right, so is, there is an unjust system that exists here that disproportionately incarcerates our people. So we need to make sure that we are really tackling this issue head on. Uh, as part of my role at Legal Services was to give expungement seminars where we'd help people identify whether or not they were eligible for expungements. And on that, on that matter, we need to look at these expungement laws because honestly, they're not that generous. Part of what, I'm going to, what I plan to do is work the partnerships uh, in order to help lobby legislators to make expungement laws more lenient. Uh, and then lastly, just require the developers. Mr. Huckaday, you, you can add that to your next answer if you want to, but we have a one minute limit, I'm sorry. Um, okay, Mr. Huckaday. Next question. Is it really a question, but it, um, the topic is homes for the homeless. Mr. Simmons, how would you address homes for the homeless? I guess by providing homes and shelters for them, really. It's something that they need. Um, I think there are a few that are around Plainfield already. Uh, the, the Plainfield area wide uh, engages in that as we speak, uh, <coughs> which I am a part of the Plainfield area YMCA uh, board, uh, we also, uh, we offer that. I think different churches around and organizations also provide for like uh, the homeless. Uh, providing for the homeless would mean also maybe providing for a means of um, employment so that they would not, uh, uh, well, employment would help uh, keep them off the, uh, the homeless uh, roles, but uh, I guess in uh, giving, giving them the help